Hey everyone, Happy New Year. It's 2020 and I'm here to do an update. I've had a lot of people ask, how are you doing? And I appreciate, you know, people's concern and interest, but I feel like that's such a hard question to answer. It's so complicated. I can't just like type that out in a comment on YouTube. So I'm doing my best to um, update everybody. Now, I know it's been a long time since I've done an update. There's a lot of reasons for that. One of which is that um, I've been just so busy, um, you know, a lot of my, sorry, getting like this weird glare thing going on here. Uh, a lot of my healing journey kind of centers around my son. And right now I am driving my son uh, about an hour each way to this clinic. And it's three hours of intensive outpatient therapy every day during the weekday. That takes up a lot of my time. Um, it's takes up a lot of our family's time. I, I, I don't get to be home with my daughter when she gets home from school. That's hard for me because that kind of harkens back to when I was extremely severely ill from the benzos and the fluoroquinolones and, and everything. And, uh, and I, I needed people's help to watch my daughter for me every day while my son was at school for a bit so I could care for him or, you know, care for him when he got home, but also be willing to kind of care for both my kids. Um, so that's been kind of, I guess, bittersweet because I have wonderful people, family and friends who have stepped up and are, and are helping us out. And I'm super grateful for that, but it's hard. And, and it's hard to watch your kids suffer, which he is suffering incredibly. Um, his anxiety is sort of obviously related to this autoimmune illness, which sort of just blew up and exploded after taking this antibiotic that he took and now it's just been this this process now for like almost four years it's just been brutal um for me it's been four and a half years since I've been off of all meds in in, in my healing um so and and just so you guys know um in one of my previous videos we talked about a supplement that really helped my son and I provided a link for that and um, some people were saying I was trying to make money off of it, and I just want to address that. I wasn't. Um, it's a supplement that you have to sign up for in order to buy it. So I signed up so people could sign up under me, um, not try to make money off that. I haven't made a single penny actually off of that. So um, yeah, it's hard. You get, I don't know, you know, people have their criticisms and whatever, but I'm, I really am just trying to help people. Um, and it really did help him a lot, so yeah, that's the interview that I did with the researcher on nutrition, if you're interested in hearing more. Um, as far as my journey goes, okay, currently I do really well unless I don't get a good night's sleep, but there's some backstory to that. Um, last year around uh, October, November, I, I was just having such a bad time. I've had this pain off and on, this this neuralgia, right? And I've mentioned it before. And, um, and it, it can be really painful, but it, it would come and go. And sometimes it seemed to be dependent on what I ate or, you know, wherever I was at in my body's healing. But last year, it's like it was getting progressively worse and worse to the point where it was I was really disabled by this severe, severe pain. I mean, it would hurt to just breathe. <laughs> like taking air into my mouth would hurt. Um and I was talking with a friend about this and she mentioned that there's this clinic that she heard about that helps people like who have Lyme disease and things like that to heal. I thought I would give it a try. I, I honestly was so bad. I, I had a hard time researching or looking into it. I just kind of knew that it was stem cell therapy. Didn't know a whole lot. Went to Mexico, um, took my son with me. Oh, actually, I was talking to her about my son. He was so bad. Um, so it was really more about him taking him to see if I could help him. But at the process, I thought well, maybe they can help me somehow. Um, they were not able to do stem cell therapy with him because they felt he was too young. But I started doing stem cell therapy. And um, I didn't know what to expect, to be honest. Um, when I came home, though, I noticed all of a sudden my sleep was like, I was sleeping eight to nine hours. And I mean, it was just like, whoa, I had no idea that it would affect me like that um and then um they send you home with those sort of these little shots these vial shot things that you take to encourage the stem cells to continue to grow and every time I would take one of these shots um 
I would sleep great that night. And then slowly over the next month or two, I noticed that my pain got better and better. Often this pain would be aggravated like around my period or things like that. Um, and then it started to get a little worse at four months. And that's when they have you come back is every four months. So then I went back, I did my second round, the pain got better and better. And, and my sleep, which had gotten bad after taking an antibiotic, I had to take it out because I had this nasty infection, the fever, it just wouldn't go away. So, um, after taking the antibiotic, um, my sleep got bad again. And, and then I started on, I can't remember if it was then or after my second round, I started on progesterone and that's been another kind of like good, bad thing. I've, I've used na like bioidentical progesterone off and on either in the form of a cream or like a trochee because I have had so many issues with my hormones since my injury. Um, and each time I've used it, it's kind of helped and I could feel it kind of turning on me. And so I would wean off of it and I would be fine. But, um, this last time that I went to Mexico, I, I could tell the progesterone was just not doing me any favors. And it, it does, it does seem to kind of act like a benzo. I, it's not like a direct GABA agonist, but it, there is some debate. And anyway, I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to taper off of it like I've done before. And I could not taper off that progesterone. It was brutal. Um, so this last time that I went to Mexico for another round of stem cell, I asked them to help me withdraw from the progesterone because they I have talked to them about how they used to help people withdraw from opiates and things like that using stem cell therapy so and I'm hoping to get a video with one of these doctors by the way I want to I, I really want to talk about this some more and it's pretty awesome but they're kind of shy <laughs> they don't even have a website really they just kind of do their thing they help people heal that's what they like to do so anyway um they helped me withdraw from the progesterone and they used a different kind of cell. So normally when I go to get my stem cell therapy along with like sort of this other, these other therapies that they do in combination with it, they use shark stem cells um, because those apparently have more of an affinity for like your neurons and nerves and stuff like that. And they were mainly focusing on treating the trigeminal nerve for me. So this time um, they used mesenchymal cells, which are like from... Um, the placenta and, and cord and, and things like that. And just for anybody, by the way, who might have any qualms about that, it's not from like aborted fetuses or anything like that. It's just strictly from like babies that have been given birth to and stuff like uh, that. So anyway, um, they gave me mesenchymal cells. I, I don't know how much of this was due to the mesenchymal or the progesterone withdrawals, but wow, <laughs> it was, took a lot out of me and my sleep was not great. Um, I still went through a bit of withdrawals when I got back because basically it was like a cold turkey. No, it was a cold turkey. It was a cold turkey off the progesterone. Um, it wasn't as bad as it could have been. I know that. I know it helped to, you know, minimize the effects, but it was pretty brutal for the first month or so. Um, but like, and, and my pain was aggravated. I mean, the I could tell the progesterone was it creating the, the pain again. It, it was coming back and it, and I'm just... A couple months out and then my pain is gone it's totally just not even present right now I'm fingers crossed you know but I, I was really worried I was I was so concerned that this pain was going to be I don't know something that was just going to um, take away sort of all hope of, of really truly healing of living a normal life I had a friend who uh, died recently who had similar pain that just would not go away no matter what he did. He had never done stem cell or anything like that, but it was it was bad and it, it really took his life and that was from taking Klonopin. I was, I was honestly fearful that that might be me at some point. I'm so grateful that my friends spoke up and told me about this treatment and I'm so grateful that I had the means an opportunity because like I know not everybody can sorry I'm trying to get this weird light thing off of me uh, I know not everybody can go to Mexico obviously and and do this it's a lot cheaper than doing stem cells in the U.S. for sure absolutely but um it's definitely not cheap um but it, it's been I don't know it's been miraculous for me it really has and I'm, I'm supposed to go back this month to do another round, which I really want to because I, my sleep has just been so awful and 
driving my son every day and doing three hours of this uh, therapy and driving home. It's just so hard to do when I don't get enough sleep. Um, but I don't know if I'll be able to. I'm, I'm doing this. I, I just don't even know if we can work it out and, and money-wise and stuff. You know, we'll see. But I, I hope I can at least get back to Mexico one more time because I think that would really, really make my life to where I could live a normal life again for the most part. Um, I'd like to get my son back down there because it looks like we might be able to do some micro doses of stem cell for him. And um, I think it, the cool thing about stem cell therapy, it does so many things, but one of the things is that it, it it's an immunomodulator. Since my a huge part of my son's problem is this autoimmune illness, um, I believe that it can really, it has the potential to really, really make a huge difference for him too. I'd love to get my husband there. <laughs> He's got major back and neck injuries. He's in pain all the time. Gets nasty headaches. Oh, I always had migraines too. That was a huge thing for me. I kept getting migraines. A lot of that, again, I think was related to this trigeminal nerve thing. I haven't been getting migraines nearly as much. Um, I think those are going to be pretty much gone once this this pain is gone too. So I'm excited for that. Um, so what else uh, has been going on that people want to know. Um, I, I am still working with Dr. Wright on uh, potentially producing this manual. There's been a, a holdup. We were going to be doing it uh, in one direction. Now we might be doing it uh, through another, just as far as funding and, and who it goes through officially and stuff. There's so many things to deal with that I am not familiar with that I haven't considered. So it is still a thing. We're still working on that. <laughs> um, um, my book, uh, is pretty much finished. It's probably going to be coming out in March. I think the, uh, I was thinking it would come out by the end of this year, but I think I was being a little overly optimistic. There are so many things that go into publishing a book and I, I'm working on some edits now that I, uh, didn't realize there were just like little things that I didn't catch before. I'm like, Oh, so I'm rereading and making sure that it's perfect, that it doesn't have any issues, but I'm really excited about my book. I'm, I'm, I've never had any intention of writing a, a book, but I feel like this is really something that um, was inspired in a lot of ways that I'm hoping it can help a lot of people within and, and outside of sort of the iatrogenic community. Um, but it's it's called Seeds of Hope, and I'll let you guys know when that comes out. Oh, something else I've been doing. Uh, my daughter and I have been doing a channel. It's called Lucy's Bedtime Stories. Uh, we've put out two so far where she reads bedtime stories because she's just so, you just have to see to understand. You have to see <laughs> Lucy. Uh, How Grace Got Her Name is the first book. You could probably find that more easily than can find it by her channel name, I found when I try and search. And the other one's called The Adventurous Tale of Tiara Lee. And we have these books that are donated to us by authors and publishers and things. Um, and that's been really, really neat. That's been something that I guess I feel like it's something I can do with my daughter, something we can spend time on that we both love. And I can kind of focus on her and her talents and, and use, you know, the stuff I've learned from YouTubing. And, and so um, just go, maybe go over there, give her channel a little love and support, like her video or whatever, and share it with other People, any little kids who would love to hear a, a fun bedtime story and want to interact with another kid uh, online. Um, she's got her her library, so you can go and follow the link and get the book if you want it, just so you know. So um, so that's been my life lately. I, I'm Now that I have this sort of tool of stem cells under my belt, I'm really, really hopeful. I've done a lot of things in the past that have helped. I've done diet. I've done, you know diets, various diets, and they've all helped, but it just seemed like the combination of my injury between being flocks twice and the, the benzodiazepine and, and everything crazy that happened with, you know, I don't know, even the miscarriage and, and the antidepressants, there was just so many things that seemed to uh, have accumulated that were creating this progressive condition that didn't seem to be getting better. And, um, and I know there's a lot of other people out there experiencing similar things. And I don't know, or I'm not saying that stem cell therapy is the cure for everybody, for everything. I don't know. I just wanted to tell you guys about that because that's what's worked for me. And supplements, yeah, have 
worked for me addressing the nutrition, addressing um, obviously the emotional stuff, right? And healing from that and um, addressing hormone balance. These are all important components that I've been trying to talk about in the, my past couple of videos, these interviews, because there's there's a lot of contributing factors to any illness really, but especially anything that's dealing with your brain, you know, your mental illness or whatever you want to call it, you know, it, there's these five factors. And I feel like if people can address those, then they'll at least have some sort of a path to follow towards healing. Um, there's also a group that I'm involved with. It's pretty much launching this next week or the week after. It's called the Council for Sustainable Healing. And this is a group of people who are way no more knowledgeable than I am, very experienced at helping people who have dealt with anxiety, depression, psychosis. I mean, you name it, they have been there and, um, and helping people get off meds. And, you know, I, I lend my voice and my experience to this. And really, it's, it's kind of like a support group. It's, you can show up, you can talk and get help and get ideas like, hey, stem cell therapy worked for Jocelyn kind of a thing. Um, it's really great. So check that out too if you need some extra help in dealing with the after effects of the trauma from this or whatever it was that got you on these things in the first place or anything. Um, yeah, because we're there to help. I'm there to help. I, I know a lot of people ask me kind of for one-on-one -on -one help and oh, there's my husband. <laughs> And uh, I can't always give it. And it breaks my heart that I can't. I, I wish I could help everybody one-on-one, -on -one, but I just can't give that much of my time and, you know, and myself and away from my family to do that. Um, so this is a way that I can. This is a way where we can do it kind of a structured group format. And if and there, there are several groups and whichever one I may end up being involved with or I might do all. We'll see. I don't know what I have time with. But this way I kind of can and, and other people can kind of get that kind of support in whatever ways they need. Um, so um, I've kind of gone on for a long time here, but uh, I, I hope I kind of address people's questions and anything you wanted to know. I'm still involved with the Alliance for Benzodiazepine Best Practices. So follow that on Twitter if you can, or um, check it out. They're, they're kind of just barely starting with the social media thing. They're, they're really doctor focused and focused on changing prescribing practices, which is great, but it's important to get the word out so people know what's going on and that they're there. Um, I am entering my forties, I'm 41 and, uh, yeah, life is just different when you're in your forties. So as I continue to heal and things, you know, I'm, I'm going to try and focus on different things and in various ways and, and give more time and attention to my family. But I do have a lot of projects in mind still, things I've been wanting to help give, you know, to you guys and we'll see if I have time to do these things. I don't know. I'll do my best. Um. But uh, I just wish you guys all hope and healing in this year and um, love in your lives, you know, for yourself, forgiveness for whatever has happened in your life that led to, you know, such a severe injury, forgiveness for others that may have contributed to it, um, and um, that you can just move on and, and really, truly, truly heal from all of this, so. All right, till next time, we'll see you guys.